I'm Stuart Willis of the Marine Genomics Lab at Texas A&M University in Corpus Christi. My colleagues and I study the Amazon. The Amazon is the largest river in the world, discharging more than 55 million gallons per second. That's more fresh water than the next seven largest rivers combined. But the Amazon region is extraordinary not only for its size, but also for its spectacular biological diversity. The tropical regions of South and Central America are home to fishes that together make up around half of all vertebrate species on Earth. And the Amazon region contains the majority of these species. But this, of course, begs the question why? Why are there so many species in the Amazon? One major reason is likely the great variety of habitats in the Amazon. For fish, the biggest difference in habitat types appears with the comparison of white and black waters. One of the best places to see how different these water types are is called On Contro las Aguas, or Meeting of the Waters. The most famous of these is near Manaus in Brazil. Where these two tributary rivers meet, the waters are unable to mix for miles downstream because of the extreme differences in water chemistry. For fish, black and white waters pose very different habitats and must require a considerable range of adaptations for living in one versus the other. It should come as no surprise, then, that many, if not most, species in the Amazon region are restricted to only one type of water. However, those species that are found in both water types give us the opportunity to study the genetic mechanisms that underlie adaptation to each environment. For my graduate work, I was interested to know what role hybridization played in the origin and maintenance of species in the Amazon, and I chose to examine this in a group of fishes known commonly as peacock bass. Aside from my scientific interest, a major reason I chose to study these fish is because of their importance to communities in the Amazon. Knowing what the species and population structure of peacock bass are gives resource managers much more effective means of conserving them. Every additional piece of information we add to the peacock bass puzzle only improves the chances that these fish will be around for the long haul. And having all of this information gives us the ability to hone in on the really interesting patterns and ask the kind of truly insightful and integrative questions that we couldn't ask without this level of background detail. One such place concerns a hybrid zone between populations of two species that originate from those two very different habitat types that I told you about before, the black and white waters. We hypothesize that there is a cyclic process of selection on these hybrids. Each time hybridization occurs, only those descendants of fishes with the right combinations of gene variants for black water survive and pass on their genes and thus the populations in the hybrid zone may remain mixed across their genomes except for those genes that adapt them for life in this blackwater habitat. Knowing now about this opportunity, we are eager to develop a new DNA dataset using next generation sequencing technology and look for those genes that are correlated with water type and under strong selection in the hybrid zone. Once we have identified candidate markers under selection, we can estimate what genes these DNA markers are linked to in fishes with well-characterized genomes. We can then determine what effects those genes have in fish physiology and begin to unravel why some Amazon fishes are able to make the jump between extreme habitats and others are not. The fortunate part is that we already have the samples in hand that we need to take the next step. In the Marine Genomics Lab, we also have all of the equipment necessary to prepare the DNA libraries for SNP datasets. But what we do need is the funds to buy the consumable materials for DNA extraction and library preparation, and the funds to have our DNA libraries sequenced. The basic budget that we present on the project webpage provides for enough materials and sequencing for a single SNP set for approximately 300 individuals. Additional funds would allow us to do more SNP sets for those individuals, increase the density of markers across the genome of these populations, and give us more statistical power to discriminate outlier genes. Please consider making this work possible. And thanks for taking the time to learn about our project. I look forward to hearing from you. Falado meu amor pra ela vai.